astronauts it's me brandy and welcome back to astro tarot research we are back with another astrology video now this video may not be as organized as the last one not that the last one was all that organized but that is the consequences of me coming on more frequently so i'm just going to give you some tidbits i had a request to talk a little bit more about sagittarius the sign placement so i've already talked a little bit about utara shada which takes place in the sign of Sagittarius, that Nexatra placement. Um, I study more so Nexatra placements than signs themselves, though, you know, I may notice a little bit of patterns throughout time and similarities between placements that take place in the same sign, which is why they are grouped together in the same sign, of course. But this video, I'm specifically talking about Mula and Puvra Ashada, just because I haven't spoken about those placements as frequently. As usual, I have my notes, so if you see me looking down, that is what I am looking down at. Now, before we get started, I do want to remind you to follow me on Instagram if you want to see some more organized posts about astrology. And then I do post some posts about tarot or just some little insights about tarot cards if you're interested in learning more. You can follow me on TikTok as well, where if you want to just see more about my personal life or what I'm up to on a daily basis. Not as much astrology or tarot on that channel. It's just kind of me just being me doing things that I like. I'm not stuck into one little box. You know, I am a full functioning person with lots of different interests. And um, other links to social media can be found below. Let us get started on these next placements. So if you don't know your degrees or your conversions into Nixatra placements. I have a video on a black beauty study and I have the degrees translated. I may try to put that in this video. even know where to start with this so I guess we'll start with Mula. So Mula is ruled by the south node K2 and you know the south node and the north node they travel together but they travel counterclockwise to the rest of the planetary figures and the sun and the moon and etc like that. You can even think about how they travel in a astrological chart as a way to compare or to understand the nature of their placements, okay? So when they take rulership over the placement, you can expect that placement to move in a way that's different to the other Nexatra placements. Now, what I mean by that is when we enter the sign of Mula, we start to dive into topics that can be taboo towards society or isolating from society. Rahuvi and Nakshatras do this in their own way as well. Mula in particular, we're talking about more so the isolation because it's a K2 ruled Nakshatra. So Mula people do things that will push people away from them, or maybe I shouldn't say it that way, but they will take interest in things that maybe a lot of people don't take interest in, display different behaviors, that a lot of people may find maybe a little bit off or maybe that they find the behaviors to be inappropriate or even just like I said before, very taboo. Moolah gives you themes that are going to be not as easily accepted within society because keep in mind Venus, which is the planet that rules society, hasn't even, you know, taken birth yet <laughs> before the K2 Nexatras. K2 Nexatras is the, the spiritual realm. That is why K2 rules everything that's non-material. And so when you're dealing things that are outside of society, obviously you're not going to be as welcomed into it. All K2 ruled next such placements kind of focus a lot on individuality and so it becomes a theme of moolah and not just moolah but 
Magha and Ashwini, the other K2 rule placements, where it is important to be yourself, or there may be a struggle to be yourself or accept it as yourself and as you are. I follow, or <laughs> I've watched tons of her videos. Her name is Glam Goth. And Glam Goth is a Sun and Mula native. And one thing that she mentioned in one of her videos is that she, I believe she didn't have a lot of friends. And I know if I'm getting the story right, it's been like a really long time since I watched the video, but at some point she did not have a lot of friends. And this could possibly be due to the way that she was expressing herself, which is like in a very gothic manner. And you'll see a lot of Mula people dress this way. Actually, I've seen it a lot with Magha too. Not so much Ashwini, but definitely Magha and Mula may have a little bit more of a gothic nature sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And as you know, when you are displaying things that are like gothic, um, punk, etc., like that, these forms of fashion or lifestyle are even labeled alternative, meaning they are not a part of the social norm. Most people are not, you know, <laughs> walking around dressed in, you know, maybe all black with maybe more dramatic makeup and dark nails and etc. Things like that. So another example of someone who has that very alternative look or at least had it for a role would be the woman who played the original girl with the dragon tattoo, Nomi Riposte. I hope I'm saying her name right. And so you see that character had a more like darker gothic sort of look. Now, not all Mula people will have this dark characteristic look. In fact, a lot of them wear, will wear a lot of bright and colorful um, outfits. But I'm just letting you know that it represents sort of like an alternative style. You can like take these placements and how they move and what they represent within the astrological sphere to be very literal when it comes to our society. So you can see K2 ruled etc. They move away from society and they will pick maybe an alternative look, an alternative style. From my observations, I don't see as many Moolah ruled people taking on the gothic look, though that is one of the looks they may choose. They may just choose to wear certain contact colors. They may just have different colors in their hair. Granted, it's a little bit more normalized now. Another example would be Belly Eilish and how she chose to wear more baggy clothes rather than to represent a more feminine look, which would be more accepted in our current Western society if you're watching this from a Western standpoint. It's just choosing to act in a way or present yourself in a way that will go against the social norm. Now with Poover Ashada, this doesn't happen as frequently, but this does happen. Okay, so these these placements are side by side. It's not like the energy just stops and ends. But I have seen more Poover Ashada people, at least men, they will tend to wear navy, gray, and black a lot. For women, I think their style is a lot more colorful. In fact, I love looking up Poover Ashada women because they tend to have just very good color coordination. So a good example of that would be Coco Jones, Gucci Man's wife. I, she's Poover Ashada, son of Poover Ashada. She has a very interesting style that I really like. <laughs> so just a lot more colorfulness that you'll see, a lot more playing around with styles and outfits with Poover Ashada. With Moolah, they do play around with outfits as well, but they are going to be a little bit more what's the word for it? Mix and match? If, I, if I'm getting the words right, it will, it will be like very interesting to look at. Like you'll know like, hey, this doesn't necessarily look good on everyone, but it, it kind of fits you. And so when you have that kind of thought process, that person might be either K2 ruled or particularly very Moolah, where you might have a colorful palette that's a little bit kind of funky. Like I said, I have seen some Poover Shada people display that gothic nature as well, just less, very less significantly. So Christina Ritchie, I believe she has her moon in Poover Shada, and you know she played Wednesday Adams. So that's just to give you an example that Poover Shada people can express themselves in that manner as well. Another thing that I will 
note about moolah is that you have a lot of subjects as i mentioned before which deal with the taboo and i guess i'm not going to list all of the different areas that are taboo but you can imagine relationships with age gaps um, in fact, when I was doing my study for Black Beauty, the sun signs, I mentioned that you had Venusian women, you know, entering a lot of interracial dating. But the most popular placement, at least by observation, I didn't sit down and do a study, but the placement that I saw and noticeably came up the most for interracial dating was moolah. You have a lot more of expl exploration of different cultures going against what is to be expected of you. So somebody mula, like I said, they may have a huge age gap in a relationship. Somebody mula may be really skinny and they wanna date someone who um, isn't as fit or somebody mula may be, they could be very, very beautiful and they can date someone who is not con as conventionally attractive, which is why you'll see a lot of like at least K2 ruled women will be stereotyped as gold diggers because you can see the difference, like this very stark difference, huge difference in age, huge difference in terms of what people believe is attractive and um, not attractive. I'm trying to stick with the subjects that are YouTube friendly. Definitely a lot of interesting things going on which may be legal or not illegal in terms of their interests especially in the realm when it comes to intimacy okay so a lot of stuff can be a little bit more taboo okay so you might have you may have some very age inappropriate relationships or relations but it's just a, a very k2 ruled thing you may have if you live in a society where being not straight is taboo so moolah was one of the placements and a, this is a study that claire nocti did where you had the most openly gay men. So as I said, it's just one of those placements that just like very much in your face, like, hey, I'm not going to do what is expected of me. And not to say that being gay is a choice or anything like that, but I'm just letting you know the energy of this Naksatra. If you know somebody with a Mula placement, they definitely do something that is not of the social norm and it cannot it may not be that extreme like i know i've met moolah people who will collect dolls or something along the lines of that but they may be like a lot older like they may be like a 40 year old collecting dolls okay so it's something that's like okay that's a little bit unexpected and even and by some people in society definitely something that you may be even judged upon so that's something to note about the, the moolah placements. There can be this theme when it comes to greed. And I don't want to sound like I'm just listing a bunch of horrible things about moolah people because I'm not. I love all the placements. So one of the themes I noticed over and over by reading books and looking up natives of this placement is that greed becomes one of the themes of their lives. And this can be greed when it comes to money when it comes to people so uh, a thing that i noticed right away when i first started studying moolah placements is that you would have moolah people kind of be involved in a lot of let's say you have one partner that you are intimate with moolah people may have three people that they're intimate with or two people that they're intimate with at the same time and that was something that came up over and over again like very frequently that I would see that so it's just about having multiple partnerships and they could be they might be polygamist but it's kind of like hey they just want more they want more okay so that became the theme of just like not just having one thing so like I said it could be material things it could be possibly people whatever the the subject it is it could be knowledge so there's a thirst towards knowledge, but we'll get to that in a second. But greed came up quite frequently when it came to moolah. I would see a lot of moolah placements when it came to sort of like underground realms, gambling, drug dealing, <laughs> any way to like make 
a large sum of money that may or may not be legal, okay? So that's just something that I notice come up. It may not even be that extreme though. So, but they may just have a love for shoes. So this is something that could fall into the realm of greed and I think it's more normal for a moolah person is they may have a spending habit. So you could have a moolah person who loves, 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 loves to collect shoes or they love to, they love makeup or they love to collect art or something like that. And so they will max out their credit card and just buy and buy and buy. But shoes came up quite a bit for some reason with moolah. <laughs> Don't know why, but it did. And when it gets like very detrimental, that's when you go, like I said, into the the other realms, like the, the underground sort of black market realms, or you may have a lot of moolah people who may be like scammers. You may see moolah people be very, very open. After all, K2 kind of rules truth. And one thing that a lot of moolah people will do is seek the truth. When it comes to seeking the truth can possibly, like I said, be very much like, let me seek towards knowledge. Let me read a lot. So you may see a lot of vivacious readers, a lot of people who do a lot of research, a lot of people who will read a lot of articles, watch a lot of videos, like, um, read a lot of books, gather a lot of information, do a lot of intense learning. That's something that is very integral to moolah and that's what I was mentioning earlier when I was talking about the sort of nerdy factor that you may find. So a lot of moolah people will be very nerdy. They just really will. They'll be te people who you will see do a lot of reading. I think even Oprah said it herself, like she is a moolah rising. She said, one thing I was good at and as I was good in school, she said, I was that person who was very bookish, who liked to read. And that's just a very moolah thing. If you see the newest, I think, Beauty and the Beast starring a woman who played Hermione in Harry Potter. For some reason, I can't remember her name. Emma Watson. She in that movie, you see Belle, she's collecting all of these books. She's reading all of these books. The Beast shows her the library. She freaks out. She loves all the books. That's a very moolah type energy to just want to collect knowledge. And this is why we are in the sign of Sagittarius here, which rules knowledge. Moolah people will love information and they are generally smart people, even if they don't always display themselves in that way. And that brings me back to the point where I was making about truth, being yourself and lying in your truth. Moolah people can be very open and very honest and that may not always be perceived in the best life. Light. So one example of Moolah people being very open and honest about kind of who they are and all their messiness would be Snooki from the Jersey Shore. You had her whole life out there on display of, you know, her partying, um, the, the sort of drinking habits, the being up, the, <laughs> the times that, you know, her dress was like rising up and just things like very kind of like messy behavior that most people may try to hide. Moolah people are very open about maybe even their worst moments that have happened in their life, whether it is them behaving in a way that might potentially embarrass themselves in the future or them possibly going through a traumatic situation which was not ideal for them. And even Amy Whitehouse also had a moolah placement very similar to Snooki from Jersey Shore where she was very open about her alcoholism. She sung songs about it. You know, they tried to make me go to rehab. I said, no, no, no. And that is a commentary that I see a lot when it comes to moolah. People will say these people are very honest and very truthful when it comes to their own lives. But not only are they very honest and very truthful when it comes to their own lives, they'll be very honest and truthful when it comes to their own opinions and what they have to say. And this can get them in trouble as well because uh, truth can be very, very harsh, right? One thing you'll notice, if I give an example, there's the movie The Duff and it stars a moolah native and she... I think she has a crush on some other guy. But anyway, she's at a party and all of her friends are kind of like just hanging out and she's by the punch bowl and 
some guy comes up to her and he's just like, oh, you're so, you're like very cool. It's so great that you're like this cool duff. And she's like, duff, like what's a duff? Now this guy who came up to her is Ashwini, another K2 rule placement. So they're gonna act very similar. And so he tells her duff's designated ugly fat friend, right? So K2 rule people will kind of come up to you and tell you how maybe you are being perceived by others, even if you may have never even asked for it and doesn't even have to do with perception. It could be due to any issue. Like if you come up and say, hey, I have an issue with this, this and this, they're going to say, oh, that's because of blank. So I'll give you another example. There was a video that I was watching and the, the video I was watching was very hard to understand because the person had an accent. And you had some people kind of saying like, okay, you know, work on your videos, you're doing a good job. But then you had some other people in the comments who were just like, hey, you need to work on your accent. And because of the commentary, the behavior of that YouTuber changed. As you can see, even though these harsh truths can be off-putting, they can also be very much necessary because it does allow for improvement and it does allow for people to better their lives and to make changes. Now, this leads me into another topic. So for myself, I just conducted a mini study of just like mean girls and media and moolah was one of the placements that came up because of their harshness and their speech and what they can say. They can be very, very blunt, very, very outspoken, very opinionated. And a lot of the times it may not be that well received. This is not every moolah person. In fact, you may have other moolah people who they can be very overly friendly. So for example, I'll give Jersey Shore again because it's on my mind. When Snooki first came into the house, she was just like trying to connect with everyone. You know, she was like, oh, party time, who wants shots? Like she was acting like everyone was their friend already. Now, this is something a lot of moolah people will do. They will be very, very friendly up front. They will just come across like they want to get to know you right away. And the reason for this comes back to what I was saying before is the isolation that a lot of moolah people will face. It doesn't necessarily all the time have to do with their behavior. Sometimes moolah people may be isolated because they don't just fit the area that they're in. It doesn't necessarily have to be like they're doing something wrong or or something that's just off-putting or weird or kind of strange behavior. Sometimes you could just have a moolah person who is mixed race. Even not just moolah, this goes for all the K2 ruled placements. You could have a, a mullah person who was adopted and then everyone around them has like families or their biological families, which creates um, an isolation because they can't relate to people on that level. They have another level that they have to deal with. So as you can see, because of this isolation, a tactic a lot of moolah people will do is be, be very friendly up front because they are lonely and they want to make friends and they want to have support and they want company like normal humans, right? They want human connection. And a lot of K2 rule placements, this is not just moolah, are very starved for human connection. That is a theme that has come up a lot with moolah, a lot with Rahu, um, but in a different way, but we're not on that video. So a lot of people with, with K2 rule placements will be starved for human connection. And one of the kind of quick band-aid ways to do that is to be a part of the alternative crowd. So people who, you know, skip class and, you know, smoke blunts and stuff like that, or people who um, get into a party lifestyle. Um, because when you do these things, you're able to form this group quite quickly because you're bonded over something that you guys do together. Oh, we're the, we're the like outside group who skips class and, you know, smokes or we're the outside group who goes out and parties and do shots and acts like crazy. This is a quick way that a lot of K2 rule people will form connections. So this kind of happened with Amy Winehouse as well, where you know, she got into her, her drug abuse and things like that because she was starved for that connection. She didn't have that within her own family. You guys can read more about or watch more about her, her life story and everything like that. 
but as I said, this is a great, not a great way, but this is a tactic that a, a lot of K2 rule people will do. And they're not the only placement that does this, but they are a very popular placement for it. So because of their loneliness, you know how K2 rules smoke. And if you don't know, I'm letting you know it rules smoke. You'll see a lot of K2 rule placements, particularly Moolah. Moolah is probably the most placement for it, probably the most popular placement for it, to smoke cigarettes. And when you smoke cigarettes, you will easily find a group of friends or people that you connect with and bond with over just cigarettes, over just smoking outside because a lot of people, they may don't want to be around that smell. They don't want to be around the fumes. They don't want to be around the, the toxicities that come with, you know, smoking cigarettes and things like that. And so when you find that group of people who are kind of going against society, especially this day and age when it's kind of like very, very looked down upon, you can easily find that click, that group that will accept you. And this is another theme of moolah, acceptance. This is why you'll find a lot of cult leaders or a lot of people who are have like very massive kind of huge followings. Not all of them, but a good amount of them will have very like very obsessive followings. So example of this would be Trump who has MAGA placements, K2 rule placement and his fans um, or his supporters are like very diehard for him because he's so accepting of their opinions or thoughts that aren't supposedly politically correct. Like I said, going against sort of like that Venusian cultural acceptance. Okay. Mula people or K2 rule people in general will have a lot of people either come towards them, praise them, be happy about that because they can be very, very accepting. I mean, just think about the things that you feel the most insecure about and then imagine a person saying to you, not only do they accept you for it, but they feel the same way or they love you for it or they think that this is the most amazing, wonderful part of you. Like, let's say you're somebody who was, had a gap tooth and you were insecure about your gap tooth and the K2 person comes along and says, I love your gap tooth. I think your gap tooth is is beautiful. In fact, the reason I'm talking to you and came over to you is because you have a gap too. When people feel that sort of acceptance for who they are, it gives them a very warm feeling. And K2 rule people, it was commented on frequently that they are very much accepting. They are just uh, uh, that spiritual <laughs> um, essence. It can go in, it can go in a bad direction, and it can go in a very very good direction. Like I said before, K2 rules very taboo things, so they can be accepting of things that are just like a no-go. But then they can also be accepting of things that maybe society has pushed back against and in and may not be right. So for example, as I gave before, a lot of K2 ruled men or even women too I've actually seen will be gay, bisexual, etc. And they will obviously be accepting of people who have sexualities that are not straight. That's some that's one of the observations I can give you about Mula, very accepting placement in general, or at least seemingly, okay? Seemingly, okay? <laughs> that is the word here. A lot of them can be just genu genu genuinely accepting, but some of them can fake it. Okay? And this kind of goes for all of the K2 rule and such. I keep saying that, but like, I'm trying to be specific about Mula, but some of these things really apply to all of them is that you'll see them be very noted for their smiles. Like a lot of commentary that I saw on Mula people, K2 rule people in general, Maka, Ashwini, as people will make note of their smiles. They say that they generally like their smiles, that their smiles can be very charming, that their smiles seem to be very like shocking to them, or I don't know, because I guess the aura that I notice that people tend to get off of Mula people is that Mula people can be naturally very intimidating. That was just a gen genuine thing. They're either like very intimidating or or they don't expect them to be very like kind of open and friendly in a way. So when K2 people smile, a lot of people are very pleased because it's so it catches people very much off guard or there's like, oh, you don't seem like you'd have like such a um, friendly vibe or you would that you would have such a beautiful smile or you'd be so welcoming so that's another thing even the chesser cat 
from Alice in Wonderland, the original person who drew that was a MAGA person. So when you think of people who have very like magnetic smiles, if they're not sun ruled, then they might be K2 ruled in that sense. That is something very noticeable. When I see somebody mention the smile, I automatically think, oh, that person might be K2 ruled because people say they really enjoy the smile of K2 ruled natives and the smile can be something to disarm people it could just be something as i said before to gain friends because they might be lonely so they may smile a lot or it could be because they're nervous just smiling in general is just a very kind of like k2 ruled thing um saturnian people can smile a lot too but it's it's a little bit different the k2 ruled smile is like I don't know, mischievously charming. I mean, the best example I gave was the kind of Alice in Wonderland smile with the Cheshire Cat. You see, it's kind of like very off-putting, but it's also very welcoming, but it's also kind of like, kind of creepy in a way too. <laughs> it's noticeable, it's memorable, and it's something that can help you spot somebody who might be Keita ruled, Moolah ruled in particular. Moolah people in general, socially may ask a lot of questions. The questions may be very invasive or they may make a lot of statements that are just like, whoa, I can't believe this person <laughs> um, said that or just did that. Or um, I knew somebody who was moolah and they were so blunt and so upfront that it would make me laugh because it was like so funny because you don't really expect them to say that. They're the ones who will poke the, the pink elephant in the room. And that is why you will see a lot of K2 ruled people be journalists. So I was looking up just random journalist hosts, you know, like the morning show. And a lot of them were either mercurial ruled or they were K2 ruled. So you'll see them be the type of people to kind of interrogate people, ask a lot of questions, but then also be on that morning show smiling, being like, welcome back to your morning show. Like, and you kind of think when you think of those morning hosts, you think of that their cheesy smiles, right? Well, that's that K2 ruled energy coming in where they have those cheesy smiles, but then they also, they're doing those um, K2 ruled things, asking the invasive questions, saying things that people want to know and what they're thinking. That's kind of like where they're in their element and as I mentioned before Oprah is probably one of the most famous interviewers and also probably one of the most famous moolah ruled natives and at the time you know she couldn't be kind of controversial controversial now that people kind of look back on her but um, at the time she was asking a lot of the questions and she was um, diving into topics that people weren't diving into and she was poking at subcultures and she was inviting guests on and um, I remember the interview that she did with Dennis Rodman and she was like why all the crazy colors in your hair because that's probably what her audience was thinking. She may have really not had a huge opinion on the crazy colors in her, his head but she knew she had to ask that question because that is what brought in the views. That's what brings in, that's what the viewers want to know. At the time, it was not that popular to have a lot of different colors in your hair. So you have the K2 people kind of being at the front of journalism. So a lot of Mars rule people too, but I see a lot of Mars rule people doing like very one-on-one -on -one kind of street red carpet interviews versus K2 people. Like I said, they do the morning shows. They're doing the kind of like Oprah Winfrey like spots and they are very good at their jobs, right? So that is something, if you were a K2 rule person, then you'd probably do right really well in the field of interviewing people or being in the media in that spotlight and asking people those questions because that's something at least Moolah wants to do. They want to get to that truth that I was talking about, getting to the root of the matter, which is probably why Moolah is known as the root, or at least that's one of its symbols and one of the meanings of its symbols. Not only will they want to get to the root of themselves and who they are spiritually, emotionally, integrally, Googly from an integral stance stale, um, then they will also want to get to the root of undiv indiv other individuals as well. Now, when we get to Prover Ashada, this is where the energy is a little bit more closed and a little bit more selective. So one of the things that you can easily separate from Puvra Shada people and Mula people is Puvra Shada people generally want to be more accepted. So they don't deal with having isolation as well as K2 ruled people. And that's another thing I want to say about Mula. A lot of commentary will say that they are brave because they'll put themselves out there 
and they may not care about the repercussions, which is why you will also see a lot of Keturul people being that person in the horror movie that opens Pandora's box, especially Mula. Mula is like the number one last girl that you will see in a horror movie. If you don't know what the last girl is, it's like the last person standing. It's usually like a virgin. And yes, a lot of Mula people will be celibate. They will be virgins for a very, very long time into their 40s, 50s, da 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 da. Some of them can be the complete opposite and be very, very promiscuous, but they will kind of like have that title. It'll be, it'll, it's like it floats from one extreme to the next. So like I said, they either like celibate for a very long time, maybe virgins for like till they're in their 40s, 50s, 30s, late 30s, etc. Back to what point I was making, you have that last girl in the horror movie genre or that person who kind of pokes at the monster and lets people in and causes all this chaos for people. That is very much that moolah energy where they're just poking, like I said, at that pink elephant in the room. Because they poke at the pink elephant in the room, they can be a little bit more isolated. Poover shot of people do not want to deal with that isolation. They recognize that it is a lot easier to get further in life or at least to have some semblance of peace, which is what Venus represents, if they are not constantly poking at the pink elephant in the room. That does not mean that they don't want to. In fact, this is why you will see a lot of Venus and K2 rule people come together. And let me tell you something about the planet Venus. If you didn't already know, Venus rotates opposite backwards to the other planet. So it may be moving in the same direction as the other planets, but it's rotating in the opposite direction that most planets will rotate in. And you can look at that nature of the planet Venus and kind of view that as how Venusian people are. So they may be moving in the same way, in the same manner that everybody else is moving, but internally they may be more like, I kind of agree with those K2 people over there. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they are moving in the same way that everyone else is moving to create balance, peace, and so that it's not chaos everywhere, which you will see when you start to look at a lot of media produced by K2 ruled people that it often leads to a lot of chaos. Venusian people do not like chaos and you'll see them a lot of the times really enjoying these simple things in life. Puvrashada, one thing that I noticed right away from observation is that they can be very, very into fitness. Fitness came up quite a bit. Now, if you're a Puvrashada person and you're not into fitness, it's up to you. But from what I've seen is a lot of them are really, really take forming their bodies or, or becoming the best version of their bodies very, very seriously. So an example of that would be Buffy the Body. And if you don't know Buffy the Body, she was a very famous video vixen, especially within the 90s. And she was known for her, well, her body, her curves, you know. She had the, the body that people were found very, very desirable. She was a very curvaceous woman, but she did, wasn't always that way. And if you see her interviews, she had to build her body, which is what something a lot of Venusian people are very, very good at. They are very, very good at molding their bodies into the image that either is acceptable by society or just the image that they themselves are pleased by and that they like. And a lot of them will take a lot of pleasure and enjoyment in becoming or, and, and challenging their fitness or challenging meeting certain fitness goals. Maybe they're like, I want a six pack and they work towards that. Venusian placements are very, very good at sculpting their bodies, which makes sense because Venus is the planet of beauty and part of your beauty is your physical form. I saw a lot of provers shot of people put an emphasis on you know either cardio weightlifting whatever it is that they're into but they really really liked working out and you can look at people also like Ellie Golding the singer one of her other passions is fitness I think she even wrote a book on it and her book kind of delved into her addiction to working out and how she had to kind of you know, pull back and create a little bit more of a balance within her fitness routine and to not to be so obsessive on trying to hit certain fitness goals. Like I said, Venusian people can very much be very much like uh, obsessed with the, the fitness 
level or the aspect of the appearance and making themselves look great, okay? And I've also seen a lot of Venusian people be strippers and this is not just for women. In fact, I saw this a lot for men as well where they will either I guess, I don't know, I guess they, they just strip. Like, I just seen them star in movies where they were either taking their clothes off for money or taking their clothes off for women. So they're one of those placements that would probably be really good at the, the Chippendales thing. So Venusian men are the type of men that you will see who will kind of dance and use their body to create some um, excitement in women, which is not the norm for most men, but because they are ruled by the feminine planet Venus, and Venus is more of a soft energy, which soft energy is using basically your appearance, and just using your desirability to get what you want out of people, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a um, um, feminine thing. As I said, Venusian men are doing the same thing. So they're moving in the same way that is typically what you would associate with women. Because when you think of strippers, most people will think of women, but a lot of Venusian men themselves will also be strippers. The type of guys who would probably be, you know, shirtless on TikTok and dancing, and they love to dance. Um, Venusian people in general love to dance. Puva Shada loves to dance. Mercurial placements like to dance too, especially Ashlesha. I've noticed Ashlesha likes to dance, but we're not talking about the mercurial placements. We're talking about Puva Ashada. So Puva Ashada people will more than likely like to dance. They like to entertain. They like the arts. This placement is kind of known for like the, the starving artist in a way. A lot of people will find Venusian men in particular if they really take care of that physical form, then they are very much desirable for a long time. So example would be Morris Chestnut. And a lot of women will say comments like, oh, he's got like three generations of women in a chokehold because he's been fine for so long. Like he's just a good looking guy. That's something that you will see with Venusian men who spend a lot of time and focus on looking good and looking presentable and making sure that they are seen in the best light physically and personality wise too. I don't really see a lot of Venusian men outwardly acting kind of wild, but you will see Venus will hide their, they'll hide the things that they believe is not accepted by society, which leads me into something that I have observed where I have seen personally, because I have known a lot of journalists, I've seen Venusian men be more closeted gay. Women, I haven't seen it, but I would imagine it would be the same thing only because I've seen this with Basrani where I've seen a lot of closeted gay women and I've seen it with Puvra Falguni, but not as much. The main combination that I've seen for closeted women, which I don't even know, I guess I'm not exposing. It's not like every person with this placement is gay or anything like that, but I've just noticed it. From my observations, and this is not saying if you have this placement, it's this and this, or you can notice if you see this in this chart, then this means this. Not necessarily, but I've seen the combination of Uttara Bajrapada and a Venusian placement. So uh, it could be Uttara Bajrapada with Bhatrani, Uttara Bajrapada with Puva Shada, Uttara Bajrapada with Puva Falguni. And if I see that in a women's chart, I might be like, oh, that, that woman might be into women and that's I'm not making any judgments here like I'm accepting of everyone I you know every legal sexuality is great by me but that's just something an observation I'm I, I, I don't know if you if you ever need that information for anything I don't believe in outing people so I guess there, that's that but it's something to make note of and that I notice and I want to share the knowledge that I have so maybe some of it is not appropriate I don't know um, I'll get black backlash for it if um, if it's not, I guess. Like I said, when it comes to hiding who they are, you will see probably a lot of Puva Shada like people play um, like this kind of classy businesswoman or businessman who's still a little bit street. Puva Shada people, they may be like very buttoned up, wearing designer, having like the Gucci purse. Take note of the fact that even though Venus is a feminine planet, the feminine planets do tend to be very aggressive, especially Venusian planets. And I've seen this with moon ruled people as well, especially men. Like you'll see them playing characters like the person 
who stars in Plower that plays Ghost. I believe he has a son in Poo Rashada. And you see how he plays like this very like kind of upscale businessman, but he's also like this very street drug dealer. So there is that sort of tough nature toward as Venus individuals, or there can be. <clears throat> and the reason I say that there can be is because on a personal observation level with interacting with Venusian Puvrashada individuals in particular, I have noticed that there will generally be a time in their life where they are going to kind of be pushed to stand up to them for themselves. Similar to how Mars rule people will be pushed to stand up for themselves, especially due to bullying. I've seen a, a few Puvrashada males in particular, which you may not expect, be bullied by women. I've definitely seen that repeatedly. And generally, they are not going to come out in the public and announce that, you know, women are attacking them. And I mean physically. <laughs> so yes, this is very common for Venusian men to go through. And I'm sure this probably happens to women as well. It kind of reminds me of like Tiger Woods's wife. She wasn't being attacked. In fact, she was the attacker in this case where you see the aggressive nature of Venus when she found out that Tiger Woods was cheating on her and she went after him with the golf club and chased him, right? So even though they may present themselves in this very much neat put together way, they are still placement that will take it to the streets. <laughs> so that's something to note about Venusian people. But going back to the intelligence, I see a lot of Venusian people just be very well spoken, very knowledgeable, do a lot of research, just very much so just smart people. Now they may or may not excel in school, but they are generally smart otherwise. I would say a lot of Venusian people do not like studying in school. Unlike I've seen sun rule people, they usually do very well in school. But Venusian people, eh, it depends. It really depends. If they feel like they are getting some sort of sense of gratification or they're seen or they're being seen as like, oh, this person is better than <laughs> better than other people or they stand out in a way or they say, hey, I'm an individual, this makes me special, then they may be motivated to do well in school. But if they are not feeling like they're getting that sense of praise for it, then they may not feel that motivation to do well in school. But generally, like I said, Venusian people are very smart. For example, you have Truman Henry Safford, who was a astronomer and he was very, very great at calculations from a young age. Someone like that who may excel and do very well in a certain subject and his subject, it was obviously math. I've just seen a lot of Venusian people, people make comments on the fact that they are either very mature for their age or they're very, very intelligent and kind of wise beyond their years. And particularly Poover Shada people are seen in that light as well, just very smart people. Something that I've noticed throughout the sign of Sagittarius is the reversal of fortune. I was going to mention it with Mula, but um, it's kind of slipped my mind. But yes, uh, reversal of fortune is what you see. I saw an interview with Coco Jones talking about how, you know, she was famous as a kid and she climbed that mountain to reach that peak. And then she kind of said she fell off that mountain and kind of had to climb it back up again towards the top. And I was just watching, I think I had a couple of few months ago, this TV show, um, it's like a TV one movie about the story of Job and it starred a Mula native. And I was like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. That Sagittarius energy where you have everything and you lose it and then you have to like gain it back again. So that's something that's very much a Sagittarius energy and that will flow through Mula, Puvrashada and Uttara Ashada. And if you see my video on tu Uttara Ashada, I did mention that and they all kind of climb up in their own way. And if you know tarot, then you know the card, the Wheel of Fortune, the thing that goes around and around that is ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter does rule the sign of Sagittarius. So it's no surprise that they have that reversal of fortune again. You'll see a lot of Poo Rashada people be artists, singers, performers. Generally, they like to express themselves creatively. And if they're not expressing themselves creatively, actually, I've never seen a Poo Rashada person not express themselves creatively. I'm gonna be honest, I just never have seen it. I follow a Poo Rashada person. She does a lot of 
TV reviews or movie reviews. She reviews a lot of movies. Um, she also, you know, randomly sings and such like that, very much into makeup. I, I, I like I said, I've never seen um, a Poover shot a person not express themselves in some sort of creative way. I knew some a Poover shot a person who liked to make little different crafts. I've known Poover shot of people who like to dance. They usually do like some sort of creative expression it, even if they're just like singing in their bedroom they like to sing my my younger brother he has a poover shot at placement in high school he would be in musicals and such like that so that's a placement that you will see for guys to do plays to do musicals which people are sometimes associate with being not so masculine but poover shot of people men and women love to express themselves through the arts and creativity aisha k and i'm, I'm not going to pronounce her last name right so i'm not even going to bother with pronouncing it i'll just enter her name below but um she was uh, just a very wonderful spirited person very intelligent person but i first saw her on the youtube um i don't know what to call it platform grapevine where they have these discussions and they just kind of throw a topic out there and people discuss things so you know i looked her up and she had a lot of videos on you know feminine empowerment female empowerment different archetypes you know like the siren the sage and things like that so you can see a lot of poover a shot of people into subjects that have to do with feminine power different seduction types different archetypes having to do with using your soft power which is kind of what I mentioned before with how Venusian men are able to tap into that soft power that is normally reserved for women. And what I mean by that is the power, like I said, of persuasion through desirability. So being able to outwardly present yourself in a way that is desirable, whether that is just like you physically being desirable, you being very flirtatious, you being somebody who just kind of just seems very happy and outwardly welcoming. That is something that you will see men and women of Poover Ashada being able to master. Poover Ashada people who have been socialized in a positive manner will be very well-mannered people and present themselves in that manner and they don't want to rock the boat outwardly too much unless it's something very radical that they just cannot can no longer hold back then they'll you know speak their mind or if they feel like they're in a safe space then they will speak their mind on how they feel or what they want to express but from what I've seen by interacting with Poover Shada people is they are very friendly, very sensual, very flirtatious. Like I said, a lot of a lot of Venusian placements are flirtatious. I think Poover Falguni though is probably the most flirtatious that I have seen. But some of the not so great things about Poover Shada people that is noted is that Poover Shada people can sometimes be very selfish, whether that is with their time, whether that with you know not considering other people's feelings so certain things like um, let's say you're part of a friend group and you're dating someone then you guys break up the poover shot a person might want to date your ex and so that creates a lot of conflict where poover shot of people just see oh this person's available they're not really thinking oh my friend may still have some sort of lingering feelings or etc like that or this may be a violation of loyalty so things along the lines of that that's something that I have seen frequently with the Venusian placements. That's not necessarily just Poover Ashada, but I have seen that. They're like, okay, you know, we're all kind of like dating each other in this friend group. They don't see it as like, this is a line not to be crossed, okay? And it's not just with dating, it could be with, and I've even seen it in media where they don't play the devil themselves, but they will play like the devil's minion, okay? That's like a weirdly popular role for particularly Poover Ashada people where they play that person who wants to do the bad deeds of I guess someone else basically so that kind of translate into real life where they're kind of giving in to their more selfish nature and kind of focusing on their own pleasure instead of thinking about what is best for the group or what is best for society or what is best for relationship personal relationships you know every trait has good and bad right so that's one of the things with Poover Shada I don't know if I mentioned it before but as I was talking about how 
Hoover Shada people like to present themselves as very classy. So another thing that they really, really enjoy is having like designery or luxury things or even just things that are just hard to obtain by the average person. I saw this one person that I follow on Twitter. He posted something about his girlfriend, gave him this one of a kind, not one of a kind, I think it was like only 10 made of this Lakers wallet that was made by, I don't know if it was Versace or Gucci or so, it was like some designer. So it's like saying that they have one of the, one of like one of a kind things or something, like I said, not easily attainable by many people, something that's special, something that costs a lot, something that has high price and value in society that they will spend their money on designer or going to, you know, luxury events. They, they want to at least be a part of the high life. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be all the time, right? But they do want to experience the best things that life has to offer. And having the best, you know, hairstylist, something along the lines of that, that's something that they would very much value. Like I said, it has to do with being able to attain something that is like hard to reach by the masses because I know a lot of Venusian individu individuals want to, well, they want to feel like individuals. They want to separate themselves from the crowd and the group, but at the same time, they also want to be a part of the crowd and the group. It's kind of an interesting dynamic, but I guess that's why Venus is the planet of balance. So they And actually speaking of things that are just like special, you, if you guys ever seen the movie um, Moana, <laughs> you know the, the person who plays the crab? He actually has a son in Puva Ashada, and you see how the crab's going on about like how he likes shiny things. He's like, you know, shiny. Like I have a niece, so I've seen that um, scene a billion times. But that's kind of like the mentality of um, a lot of Puva Ashada people. They want that shiny thing. They want that thing that sparks, that's special, that's unique. Okay, so that's something that is very much a Puva Ashada. Sometimes you can see Puva Ashada people particularly men that I've seen kind of be a little bit more not as loyal or just commit more infidelity, especially if they are someone of high status. So that's just something that I've noticed about Puvrashada men. Not all placements are like this, but definitely Puvrashada came up when it came to having like the high risk of infidelity. Like I said, not every Puvrashada person has these traits, but it is something to be noted and that kind of goes into what I said before how one of the traits of Puvrashada can be like selfishness and not thinking about how your actions really affect other people. That's just something to note. So obviously one of the ways that it's expressed is another thing to note about Puvrashada individuals is that they can be very very shrewd and good businessmen and women making great decisions able to balance out that you know work and home life but they really can be very accomplished within their fields because you know they want to be able to afford the things in life that they want so they will make decisions in order to do so and smart decisions but that doesn't mean that they aren't passionate people they just have to th they just know that they need to think logically as well. So another thing that I've seen with Puva Ashada people is sometimes they may pretend to be someone that they're not in order to impress other people. So they might pretend to be from a different country. They might pretend to like certain things. Like if you like sports they might pretend to like sports in order to um, be with you a lot a few other placements do this but i've seen it frequently with puva shada they may pretend to have you know more money than they have um in order to make an impression and this is for men and women alike <laughs> but they're basically pretending to be someone that they're not in order to be accepted by the person that they desire. Like, oh, you want tall women? So, you know, maybe they always wear heels around the person who said that they only like tall women or, you know, they, they like you know, guys who, I don't know, play the flute, all of a sudden you see them, Puva Shada person might pretend to play the flute, but whatever the case may be, I've definitely seen a lot of Puva Shada people kind of put on or play a role in order to impress the person that that's the object 
of their eye. And the last thing I want to mention about Puvrashada, which, you know, it may need another video because I haven't done a full deep dive in Puvrashada like I've done with Moolah, but just from observations, people make the observation about Puvrashada people is that they find them very like sexually magnetic, just a high level of um, attraction towards Puvra Ashada people makes sense. How I was talking about how they kind of master soft power, and as I mentioned before, soft power being that um, desirability factor. You can even see this in movies. Was it like Mahalena, where you have the Puvra Ashada video? Sorry, Puvra Ashada individual played by Monica Belushi, being that desirable woman who kind of moves through town and she kind of suffers for her beauty but we're not going to go into that movie but yes these are the observations that i've seen about puvra shada people so that is the end of this video i will do some more videos i'm sure i'll expand more on puvra shada because i know that i'm sure lots of you have that placement and obviously i want to do deeper research but you know, I just want to give you the information that I currently have. So I will see you guys next time. Au revoir.